Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Today, we're going to be talking about the aircraft catapults that this ship once had, as did most battleships. Uh, and we're talking about them because we recently got to see one in person on the battleship Alabama. Uh, we tried filming this segment there, and uh, for various reasons, our audio quality was bad, even by our standards. And here's another interesting feature that they have that Battleship New Jersey does not. Uh, so we're refilming parts of it here at Battleship New Jersey. Let me tell you, the weather was a lot better on Alabama than it is here. American fast battleships of the North Carolina, South Dakota, and Iowa class, uh, including the designs for the Montana class, all were supposed to have two catapults at the fantail, along with a crane. They were all supposed to be able to operate three aircraft, one stored on each catapult on a rolling sled, and then one in the center between them on the deck. While cruisers had hangars to do maintenance on aircraft, the battleships did not. These aircraft were just exposed, sitting on deck, uh, and so there was a limited amount of work that you could do to them. Uh, much like on ships today, the aviation detachments were separate from the ships. The spotter plane pilots and ground crew all belonged to a specific squadron, and members of this squadron were put on the battleships of X Division. The spotter planes were supposed to be on board to spot the fall of shot from the main guns. Radar rendered this fairly obsolete, so most of the battleships only carried two aircraft, and they aren't really used for much. Uh, in some instances, they're used to rescue people in the water. You can launch your airplane, it lands in the water, and can pick them up. Uh, we've talked about this a little bit in our video from North Carolina the other week, where they have a float plane on the deck. Uh, these ships are catapulted off, so they're sat on the catapult, and then a 15-pound black powder charge, which is roughly the same amount of propellant, although of a different type, as would be used to fire a five-inch gun on New Jersey, is used to shoot the float plane. And it gets it up to somewhere between 40 and 60 miles per hour. Uh, the catapult is trainable, so although most pictures you see them just front to back on the deck of the ship, uh, they could and were often angled over the side of the ship, so you could rocket this thing into the wind. Then the aircraft does its mission, comes back, and it lands in the wake of the ship, which is smoother than the rest of the sea, taxis up to the fantail of the ship where the, the battleship would be deploying a like canvas sail in the water behind it. It slides up onto that sail so that it no longer has to taxi under its own power. It's being dragged by the battleship. And then the pilot can climb out of the cockpit and hook the hook from the crane onto the top of the aircraft so he can be lifted back on board. So not really something you can do in combat, uh, although these aircraft were normally launched in combat, because even if you're not going to use them for gunfire spotting, they're a huge fire liability on the fantail of the ship. And that's why they're on the fantail. Earlier ships had them amidships, but there, the large catapults uh, took up a lot of space that could be better used for any aircraft guns. And when they were hit, they burned badly in the core of the ship. Whereas if they're hit at the fantail, who cares? From here, you can see the electric motor that's going to train the catapult. But you can also see that there's a manual backup if needed, just like the other 5-inch and 40 millimeter guns. That ev everything has a manual backup except the oversized 16s. If we come over here, this is the firing mechanism. At the bottom, there's a safety that you pull out, and then this would actually set off the 15 pound black powder charge, same as in a 5 inch gun, when you shoot your kick vector off into the air. Very shortly after World War II, while these ships are going into mothballing, the catapults are all removed. By then, some of the first helicopters have already been developed, and helicopters can do everything the float planes do, but much simpler and better. Uh, and the catapults 
just get in the way of what makes a perfect helicopter landing pad, the fantail of the ship. So all of the battleships lose their catapults, and the ones that are brought back into service have their fantails reused to uh, land helicopters. By the 1980s, the Iowas uh, have a whole helicopter control station built in over turret number three in the aft superstructure. And they have their wood deck back aft replaced by an actual metal helicopter landing pad, which is built up over it. Now, unfortunately, this obliterated any evidence of the old catapults. Uh, for example, when we were in North Carolina, we could see where the catapult had been mounted. Not so on the Iowas, it's gone. It's under the uh, flight deck, you just can't see any evidence of it. Also, unfortunately, even though during the Korean War and the Vietnam War, the battleships retained their stern crane for use with the boats, um, in the 1980s, they deleted it entirely so they could add a Nixie room where the uh, crane equipment was and they could uh, free up a stern landing approach by removing that uh, huge obstruction from the fantail. And they had to add an extra boat boom to be able to crane the ship's boats into the water at that point. Essential to aviation on the battleship, the aviation crane. The Iowa class battleships have all lost theirs, but the earlier fast battleships, North Carolina, Massachusetts, and Alabama, still have them. On, uh, on the Iowas, the fantail was modified while still under construction to include 40 millimeter guns uh, in addition to this aviation stuff. And so they've got these countersunk mounting points for them, but on the older battleships, these were sort of jury rigged on after the fact. So they just sit right here on deck level. You don't have to drop down uh, and go to it. Iowa class battleships still have their gun tubs, but they don't have the guns or the associated Mark 51 directors like Alabama still has. To get to the gun tubs though, you've got to climb down into them and the, the fantail is heavily modified around the back with, with these cutouts and protrusions for supporting this gun. And that was just an aftermarket idea on these ships. They didn't receive as full of a modification. So with no existing battleship catapults left, the staff of Alabama was very fortunate that they were able to salvage one from some cruiser that was in mothballs not too far from Mobile and mounted on the fantail. And it doesn't quite fit properly. It's a little bit larger than a battleship catapult would be. Uh, so there isn't really room for it to train like it would have, but as a display sitting there on deck, uh, it looks pretty good. It brings her back to a World War II configuration, which is their period of interpretation. And uh, they are now the only battleship in the world that has a catapult on board. On November 6th, we're gonna go up to the heavy cruiser Salem in Quincy, Massachusetts, and we're gonna look at what a hangar for one of these float planes would look like, because she actually has one, even though Iowa class battleships do not. Uh, so if you're interested in meeting us and seeing us film that video live, come out and visit Salem on November 6th. That's a Saturday. Uh, we'll be on board all day. So go on their website, links in the description below, and uh, you, you can buy your ticket there or at least see their operating hours. And anybody who, who buys a ticket to be on board that day has a chance of meeting us while we're filming. Would you be willing to sit in a flimsy float plane that's blasted off the fantail of the ship at relatively low speeds uh, as your way of, of launching an aircraft? Let us know in the comment section down below if you think that's something you'd be interested in or if it's just a freaking crazy idea and you can't understand why battleships did that for about 20 years. Today's video is brought to you by the New Jersey Department of State and also by a number of other private businesses and viewers like yourselves. Instead of supporting us today, there's a link in the description to support Battleship Alabama, uh, who let us film on board. And uh, there's also a link to their YouTube channel where they are also producing content like we are. So be sure to go and check them out and give 
them a like, share, and subscribe. It'll help tell people about their museum and get the word out about their channel. Thanks for watching.